There's something really special about interviewing a fellow broadcaster. Uh, we often share the same stories, we often share the same challenges, but there's something extra special about this young woman because there's nothing about her on Google. You can't find any information. I'm talking about the G-Squad Women in Television winner, Cloni Mtumkulu. It's such an honor to be chatting to you. I'm so sorry about Google. <laughs> But listen, I mean, what a year you've had in terms of the coverage that you've given sport in general. Yeah. But what did it mean to you to win the G Sport Award? I think I've said this before that it was even in the before the awards itself. I think being nominated uh, or being one of the finalists. I think the exposure that that gave me, the commentary that I was getting or the feedback I was getting from industry colleagues as well, and I think that just was ramped up by the win itself. So I think it was very validating. Um, not that you need validation from people, but it really does do something for you to know that people are recognizing you in some way. And also I think the big thing about G-Sport is that you're not putting your name in for it. Mm. And that makes a huge difference. Because it feels it as though you're difference. forcing it, right? It feels yes. as though you're saying, uh, here, and here's my am. work. You know exactly. I am that great. Yeah. I think it's important mm. that industry peers mm. are able to laud you. Yes. So that, that makes a huge difference. And I think that of all the awards that there are out there, that is the one big thing about the G-Sport, that you're not say, you, it's not you saying it, it's all your industry colleagues. And that, you know, in case you don't know where you are in the industry, you're wondering about your place, because I have been, um, that makes a huge difference. And that sort of, it helps you, it gives you some confidence, it gives you some, some grounding in some ways. Yes. Again, not that you need that validation, but it does help you. And in terms of sort of finding your place and knowing where you are, mapping your way, mapping your thoughts and that sort of thing. Some direction, I suppose it is. How long have you been in the sports industry? <laughs> Can I just say that there's a clip that uh, a certain people at KFM just put out as a throwback to when I, I technically auditioned for them in 2010. So I've been doing this in some or other capacity since August of 2010. Wow. So that's nine years, just over nine years now. So you're approaching a decade? Yeah, it doesn't feel that way though, because mm. there's been so much that's happened in between. But I mean, I've been at ENCA for six, just over six years now. So I think this six years at ENCA is the one that's been the solid time of broadcasting. How did it all start to get into sport? Because it's not something every woman gets up and go, I want to be in no. sport. Yeah. No, and I studied, I didn't even study a sportsy thing. Um, I studied something completely different. I sort of landed up, um, upon it when, um, like I said, at KFM all those years ago, nine years ago, they were looking for women to join their team mm. um, during Women's Month. And it was supposed to be like just something that was happening on Women's Month. Uh, I don't think anyone, Jeff, um, Tabiso, Musibudi thought that it would be anything bigger than just one month of August in 2010. Yeah. And that's just where it was. So I started there. We did, um, we did a bit of writing. We answered a few sports-related questions. Um, I was um, in a break from what I was studying. I had been studying something and I was meant to be studying something else. And that just didn't happen. And then mm. this came through. So yeah, so then KFM was like for a year, a year and a half. That was where I was. But I was very raw and mm. very, I didn't know what I was doing. Yeah, but the beginning is like Yo. that. Yeah, everyone else thinks you have good potential, Yo. but all you see are your flaws, right? Yo. It was, it, no, it was bad. <laughs> <laughs> no, I like, I, just thinking about it now, I'm just like, yeah. So, so it was really bad, um, but I'm glad that I can see the progress from then to here. And that's important. I think progress is important, but the other thing I want to say to you is the first 10 years are the toughest. Mm. Okay. Right? Yes. Because yeah, you're still yeah. finding your feet. Yeah. Now you've been six years at the ENCA. Yeah. Where do you see yourself moving? Because you, you dabble in a little bit of everything. Yeah. Investigative sports journalism, yeah. you do a bit of women in sport. Yeah. Where do you go from here? I you know, I it's so tricky because I quite enjoy what I do now, but I realize as well that I need to to move forward mm. um, and to do something either very specialist mm. or just something a little bit different so within sport within sport but i'm open to i'm, I'm opening myself up to news as well mm. in a very weird way because i think that would i mean when you look at the industry and where things are at the moment and where things have been moving over the past few years um yeah news might be it might be a good change um, but in terms of sport i 
I would like to do more, and I've been saying this for so long, I actually need to, to actually make it happen. Because <laughs> uh, I've started so many times and I just, then I get stuck in it. But I need to do more writing. Yes. Um, yeah, I love writing. So I because need you to love do telling stories. More. Yes. And writing so just kind of feeds itself there. Goes that way, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I definitely want to do more writing. Um, more, I want to write columns, actually. Yes, that mm. is very true. So I really would love to do that. Um, I, I mean, look, I'm, I'm, I love cricket, by the way. I was at a cricket thing. Um, I was at the Spartans <laughs> this week. And I was like, actually, this makes me really happy. Mm. Um, covering cricket specifically, I mean. Because um, I know everyone thinks of football and women and whatever. But um, yeah, cricket, I really, really like. Um, and it just makes me happy. Um, I haven't always covered necessarily nice things about mm. cricket, but even all of that, even the admin of cricket, I think is very interesting. Um, just the game itself, like right now with the MSL T20, all of that I love. Mm. Um, so yeah, that's a so very long... So you could find your way yeah. within the sports space because mm. you want to be a multi-skilled journalist. Mm. But what about women's sport? Because you've got a soft spot for women's sport. Yeah, so that is such a tricky thing because I, I, th I tweeted something earlier this week about how it just seems like the responsibility is on women to cover women's sport. Yeah. And it shouldn't be. And that it's way. not. But, but yeah. it almost seems like it we're the poster seems. girl for the poster girl. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. you know it and yeah. you know, I like, it almost feels like I feel guilty if I don't do it. Or I feel like mm. there's an added responsibility on me as a woman to do it. Um, so that's been, but I think what really helped, and we're not, a, so like our channel is not like a specifically women's sport channel. We just cover sport and the big ones because we're a big picture sort of channel. Mm. So obviously cricket, rugby, football. Um, but with Banyana Banyana qualifying for the Women's World Cup when they qualified at the end of last year, that was a big thing. So and I think that helped to sort of focus for us the to put the spotlight on women's sport and Banyana mm. Banyana and then the conversation became around the league and would it happen and what's happening there so that was a big thing that's important um, there's less there's been less of an emphasis on cricket and the rugby but I know that there's certainly room to be better um, but we and also with the T20 coming up with the mm. cricket hopefully there'll be more of that um, but I think that women's stories need to be told yes they really do um, we take it for granted and we forget about women actually because mm. um, we we used to what we used to and men's sport is the default mm. so there's a lot of breaking down that needs to be done in media itself um, there's a lot of actually being aware that there's so much more than cricket rugby football there's so much else that's happening um, mm. and I think that's where there's a gap there not just in coverage not just on TV but um, social media marketing Everything. all of that yeah yeah it's all of that brand building is so important yeah. and yeah. as you say it's not just the responsibility of women but mm. when you look at everything that's happened for women's sport because we've had great advancement mm. what has been one of the key things that's happened this year that has driven women's sport forward it, oh, it has to be banana banana and qualifying mm. for the world cup um, that was huge and it still is um, it's a you know, I think they've tried to do it before, they've been to Olympic Games before, but qualifying for the FIFA Women's World Cup, and I think also because as a whole, the Women's World Cup on its own was such a big moment for FIFA as well and globally. Mm -hmm. When you look at the coverage that it got, the people that were at the stadium, so that was a big thing. When you look at now, even last weekend at Wembley, England and Germany, that was a big moment was for, massive, yeah, for, for women's um, sport. There's the North London derby coming up this weekend um, with Arsenal and North and, and Tottenham's women. They're playing on Sunday, you know. So um, when you look at and all of those things are still, we still talk about that in those developed nations as a big deal. So I think for Banyana Banyana to also be part of that in a very mm. big year for women's football, that is for me the story, the big story. There is also netball. Yeah, netball's been huge <laughs> and it's going to be a great four years coming it up. It is, exactly. So I think actually not just Banyana Banyana, now that I think about it, but the netball as well. Um, the World Cup doing as well as they did. I think also getting people, I think there were so many people supporting both Banyana Banyana and the netball. So I think the fact that people were behind netball, mm. were saying there isn't a league, this is happening, this is happening, let's, let's cheer them on. Those were the two big moments, I think. And hopefully, you know, we can, we can keep that momentum up. What troubles you about women's sport? Um, coverage on from a media side, um, I, I I know we don't take it seriously. Mm. I know we don't take it seriously enough. Um, our interest is not the same. We forget about it. It's forgotten. You know. So there's that. The administration of it as well. Mm. So it's a it's a very 
um, multi, it's everyone who's not taking it seriously. I think some of the time, I think media, maybe the administrators think that we're taking shots at them, but actually media is as bad. So mm. media administrators don't take it as seriously. Um, even from a fan interest, there is some interest, but I think that we don't, we're not aware enough. Yes. And I think that might be because of the media and because of the administrators. So I would like for, for fans to, to call on administrators to do more, to call out the media when mm. we're not covering something enough, when we're not doing enough. Or to when, use your voice. Yeah. yeah. So say, actually, we want to see this on TV. Why isn't this on TV? And speak and make a difference in that sense. So, so yeah, so the administration, the coverage, um, even within women's sport itself, um, just how they market themselves as mm. well. That's also important. Because there is a big responsibility on you as a woman in to, sport to build your brand. Yes. Yeah. So there's also a lot of that where um, if I'm looking for information on the PSL, I don't like making comparisons, but you know that's, that information is more accessible mm. than if I'm looking for whatever on women. So things like that as well. So I think it's because we're still at the infancy stage. Yeah. There's still a lot to do in that sense. What is your advice to women in sport? I mean, what, what, what can they do today to make 2020 great? Um, stay involved. Uh, from a, if it's players and that sort of thing, I think maybe think about how you market yourself, how you brand yourself, how you, how you build relations with media, how you get information out there um, for media or to media. Uh, from women in sport themselves, I think it's very encouraging actually to see so many, uh, from, a, from, a, yeah, from my point of view, lots of broadcasters actually. Um, and it's encouraging because I see that, I think back in the day, we used to think that women are put there because they look a particular mm. way. And there is still, I think, some of that. But it's encouraging to see that there are so many women who work hard yes. um, and who are in the industry because they work hard. So I would say, you know, let's keep with that. Um, and don't fall for all the gimmicks that are mm. out there. And don't fall for, yes, yes, this is important. Do not fall for the temptation to compare yourself with another woman. Oh man. Because this industry does that. It does. And then yes. what it does is you start doing that and then yes. suddenly you start forgetting the gains you've made. Yes, because you're comparing yourself with someone else, um, with the next woman, mm. um, based on you think, oh no, but she, she what is she doing? What, you know, she's not doing this well enough, whatever, or she looks a particular way. And actually that's a very big thing that don't don't fall into that. Free yourself from needing to compare yourself with another woman. Because no one wins from that. No. And what can we expect from you? Because I have a sense that your star is on the rise. That something has to come mm. that is made for you. What is that? I'm hoping I'm going to be doing more writing. A book? No. No? Not, no. Just um, short form. Yep. Shorter form. Um, I, I'm not sure if I should say this, but... I, I need to, to write more on G Sport. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, I absolutely. do. Absolutely. No, no, the opportunity is that there. I'm, yeah, no, yeah. I started writing something last week, um, mm. and then I was meant to complete it, and then, and then, and then, and then, and then, and then. So yeah, so definitely more writing. I think that for me right now is the is the big thing, um, and more writing. I think that's such a good place to start because it's a great opening to other great things. Yes. But I would also like to say that I think it's important that you accept what you have achieved. Because yes. when you accept your success, you can have greater success. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, and I think the award has done that for you. Yeah, yeah it's, it's almost like I, I could feel in the week of the awards, you were like, <laughs> am I coming, am I not coming? Um, can I do this, will I win? I don't know what is going on, I could sense that. But I feel the win has been exactly what you needed this year. It has. First of all, I have to apologize for all the stress <laughs> I've put you all under um, in that week. But it was, I think again, it's that whole sort of realizing that actually you are really doing this. Yes. And you can actually do this. Um, so don't, you know, that no apology for my success that Momentum talks about. That's such an important thing. Isn't it we, so? Didn't it pull us out of our comfort your, zone? Yes. So yeah. I, I, that I definitely needed. You know, mm. to not be so, to not be scared to ask, when you're at a press conference, to not be scared to ask a question, mm. to not be scared to say, actually, my mic isn't sitting properly. Please, can you move it? To not be scared to go up front to move my mic, you know, mm. um, to not think I have, I can ask a question. To start taking up space. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So that's, that, that is here. Yeah. 
Well, I, I can't wait to see what's coming for you. I think 2020 is going to be a defining year for all of us. And I sincerely mm. hope that you start writing more. I think you will. I, will. I look no, forward I to your next will. piece on G Sport. Yeah. And congrats again. I mean, such a worthy winner of Women in Television. Yay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, thank you. I will say, I wanted to say more, but I will just say thank you. Planim Timkulu, uh, face of television in South Africa, doing amazing things, not just for women's sport, but for South African sport. So uh, follow her. She's all over the show. She's at every great concert I know of, and uh, great things to come from her. If you're watching G Sport on YouTube, if a friend does not subscribe, get them to subscribe immediately. Take care.